Hello, hello everyone. How are you? It is B, and we are here to go over a little bit of a preface for what will be going on with the new moon solar eclipse in Aries uh, happening April 8th for many of us. For some of us, we may feel this on the 9th. Uh, some of us might be feeling this now, absolutely. Uh, as all of you know, the eclipses can happen up to a month, two months before uh, any of the energies really start becoming recognizable to us. So what we're going to what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go over some of the general energies. Uh, now, will I be putting out a new moon solar eclipse in Aries for each of the signs? Yes, I will. But this is going to be uh, relatively long. So I want to ensure that you are armed with what you're going to be seeing around you as well as what might be going on within you as it relates to this new moon solar eclipse in Aries. Now, a lot of people have been talking about this. They've, they've been going just over the top with this. But as all of you know, I tend to be a little bit more practical, a little bit more grounded, even though, you know, I, I do reside within that spiritual fourth, fifth dimension, sixth dimension, whatever you want to call it where I get my psychic downloads, but I just need to let you know what is going on here uh, to possibly bring a little bit of calm, a little bit of peace, and some things that you might be seeing. So the question that a lot of people are asking is, are we jumping a timeline on April 8th at this new moon solar eclipse, total solar eclipse in Aries? And what I have to say is the answer may surprise you. All right, you might be seeing this now. You might be seeing this later. But again, this eclipse is so significant. We are talking about almost a full year, a full year. Now, the overall energy of Aries is courage, the self, the ego, pioneering, and the personal integrity, what, what you will and will not compromise within yourself. It is also barreling forward with what it is you would like to see in your life change, uh, overcoming obstacles. To the negative side, Aries can be extremely selfish extremely selfish to the detriment of others. But that is only if the negative or the darker side of Aries is coming out to play. So what we are seeing here is we are definitely seeing right around this time frame, if it has not happened already, a shedding of the old self physically, mentally, and emotionally. Some of you have already been confronted with your darker side. You may have seen others confronted with their darker side. So there is some sort of reconciliation, review, reconsideration, and recalibration of self. This is undeniable, absolutely undeniable. And it's no surprise because we also have Mercury going retrograde. So a lot of the new moon energy is coming through with the reconsideration, the review, the recalibration, the rejuvenation, the reinvention. This is what is happening. So many of us are shedding the old self physically, mentally, and emotionally. Now, what does this mean regarding the timeline jump? Is this a timeline jump? It is for some of us. This is the most important thing to understand. 
It is for some of us. If we think about what a lot of people are talking about right now regarding the rapture, uh, the path of the prior eclipse and this eclipse over, you know, the United States of America, X marks the spot, all of that, uh, I will give you what I got as a psychic download. Those of us who are changing physically, mentally, emotionally through the acknowledgement of our dark side and our weakness and how we accuse others of making our life difficult or manipulating us or coercing us or, you know, tempting us or putting us in positions that we don't like, understand that there is something within us that matches up with that particular manipulation. As we go through shedding off the old self physically, mentally, and emotionally, again, we are doing this on our own time, in our own way. We want to be better people yesterday, or we want to be better people tomorrow than we were today, and we are striving to be better people today than we were yesterday. So when we come out of this uh, total solar eclipse in Aries, people may not recognize you. They may say things like, you seem different. We don't have the same connection that we had in the past. I am not seeing you as someone that I recognize. Why are you acting this way? Now, for some of you, this may be a blessing. This may be an intense reinvention of self for the better. For others, as you ascend into your higher self and step into your sovereignty, those who had tried to control you, manipulate you, coerce you, or tempt you from the past, one, will probably fall away, or two, they are going to look at you differently as you ascend and as they stay put in their own carnage, in their own collateral damage, in their own... Uh, shadow side. We also have to remember that Venus has just passed over Saturn at this time. And Saturn is in Pisces. Pisces is the sign of no boundaries, creativity, psychic abilities, confusion, theatrics, And Venus is exalted in Pisces. The end all be all. The romance to, you know, uh, be the best of all romances. Sacrificing for the greater good. Showing love to everyone. Giving everyone a chance. Forgiveness. But as Venus is exalted in Pisces, Saturn says, wait a minute, wait just a minute. Get your head out of the clouds. It's time to get real. You want love from me? Well, show me the love you have for yourself. Stop sacrificing for others to the point where you are exhausted and to the point where you 
are completely tired, frustrated, feeling like you were taken advantage of. I am Saturn and I am here to tell Venus, I appreciate everything that you're doing in the sign of Pisces. I appreciate that you're putting love out there. But don't do so in a manner that is so oblivious to who is waiting in the darkest corners of the world to feast upon your kindness and your forgiveness and your love, your attention. So Venus basically got a wake-up call. Many of you in loving relationships are going through energies right now where it's more of a practical love as opposed to a romantic love. It's more of a love of we're in this for the long haul, we're committed, we're loyal, we love one another. But it's not easy all the time. It's just not easy all the time. So what we are going to be going through here is that interdependence will bring freedom and loving relationships towards you. And I'll tell you how you can do that here shortly. Exclusive bonds will be strengthened when you stop sacrificing your identity for others and step into your sovereignty. I'm going to do this for my husband because I know that he likes it or he would appreciate me going above and beyond. I'm going to do this for my wife because I know she appreciates it and I want to show her that I'm going to go above and beyond. The goal with the new moon solar eclipse in Aries is to reset and recalibrate so that if you are going to do something nice for someone, please go for it. Go ahead and do it. But don't make it commonplace. Don't make it something that you're doing every day because then it will be expected and you will be enabling someone else to take you for granted. They have responsibilities. You have responsibilities. Let them handle it. And you handle your own responsibilities and your own obligations. So those stepping into their sovereignty cannot be manipulated or lied to as it is not a match, not any longer. And I want to make this very clear to everyone. And I'll tell you right now, (laughs) Saturn is right on top of my moon. So a lot of you have been saying, wow, you seem to be really intense. Oh yeah, this is why. Saturn is directly on top of my moon in Pisces. So I will come across very direct in a loving, compassionate way, but I need to get this message out there so that you can use this in a practical sense. So you understand what is going on around you. So as you let go of the past, and remember, Saturn in Pisces is saying, you've got to get real with your past. Blaming others for being manipulated or lied to, or blaming others for the the blight that you have had on your life. Own it. You have something inside of you that attracted that energy and now you must jettison that energy from your person because you are being reborn anew. And forgiveness is a very, very large part of this. You have to forgive yourself 
and you have to forgive others. Because remember, they were only creating energies around you that showed you exactly what you were holding within you that must be removed, that must be forgiven and let go. So as you go through this forgiveness phase, as you go through this, wow, I did not even realize that I was the one that was contributing to this situation. And you forgive yourself and you forgive others and you start anew. You can no longer be manipulated. You can no longer be lied to because you're in your sovereignty. Interferences at work, in the family, with health, or in an exclusive romantic bond will also be eliminated. Why? Because it is not a match anymore. It's no longer a match. There may be a sense or a feeling or a desire to return to the familiar and please resist this urge. Begin anew. For example, if you are someone that says, you know, I'm not going to let this stand. I'm going to call that out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Soften your approach. You have to and you must look at yourself and ensure that everything that is released from your person, your energetic signature is one of love, compassion, kindness, understanding, and forgiveness. Let it go. So as others go through this metamorphosis, you will see people and places around you change as I just informed you of. Wow, I could always manipulate that person and control that person. Why can't I manipulate them? Why can't I control them anymore? Because they've stepped into their new self. Not a match. I was always able to get um, attention from this person. I was always able to get that person to do what I said that I wanted to have done. And, you know, I, I said, jump, and they said, how high? That is no longer happening. But if you are willing to put forth genuine, full of integrity, who you are as a sovereign individual, you will be able to reap those benefits. And other people will help you. They will support you. But if you are coming from a place of manipulation and lies and, and deceit, they will not recognize you. you will be nothing but a dried leaf floating around in the wind, a feather in the wind. It won't matter. And those who are of the manipulative, coercive, and deceitful or, or lying or interfering energies, they will meet others in their sphere that also deceive, lie, and manipulate. Those of you that are rising above the old self, and finding forgiveness and love, compassion and kindness in your heart, you will be surrounded with those people. This is why it feels like there is going to be a timeline shift. And in a way, there is going to be a timeline shift. And like I said before, I'll tell you about the whole rapture thing. Uh, that is uh, a metaphor 
in the Bible, just as just for purposes of having this discussion. Whether you believe, you know, in the teachings of the Bible or not, I mean, that is up to you. But I am using it as a metaphor for this particular transmission. And basically what it is, is the energy of this rapture is more about the recognition of sovereignty versus those who want to stay stuck in hate. I don't like that person because of their beliefs. I don't like that person because they're not doing what I say I want them to do. I don't like that person. Fine, stay there. Stay there. Because those of you that are ascending, i.e. the rapture, they will not be able to touch you. You will not even recognize them. You will, you'll see nothing but a blur. It's not a match. So there is this line of demarcation that is being created. And what is happening is, you know, it's a separation between those ascending and those who want to be stuck in this 3D material world. Now, let me make it very clear. You're still existing in the 3D material world. You are. But your ascension does not allow these specific types of people to get to you. So therefore, in your particular environment, they don't exist. You may see people saying, well, I don't know what's going on with you, but I don't have those issues. I don't have any of those issues. I'm doing great. Everything's great on, you know, you know, in my house, in my family, in my love relationship, at work. I mean, everything is great. And these other people who are riddled with hate and revenge and and uh, not able to let go of their own past pain. They look at you as though you're completely like you're not in reality. What do you mean? Don't you hate this person? Don't you hate that person? Don't you want to make this person's life life miserable? No, I really don't. I don't. So there is a peace that is falling over humanity as portions of humanity say enough is enough. I know what I've been carrying. I know I've been living in fear. I know I have allowed others to tell me what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And it has only caused collateral damage in my life, with my physical body, with my mind, with my emotional state. I am going to hop out of that and ascend. And the other portion of humanity will stay stuck. So in order to capitalize on this energy, reinvent yourself into your best life. You have to feel it and you have to step into it. The biggest advice that I can give you is that in order to truly ascend and put yourself into the timeline that best serves you is to forgive. Absolutely, you must forgive. Forgiveness of those who have hurt you is the first step. Simply know they were only reflecting the pain you are still holding on to. It is time to forgive and release. And some of you are thinking, well, I would have never done that to anybody, 
ever. I would have never done that to anybody. Okay. Maybe you wouldn't have. But did you in the past? Did it happen to you in the past? Are you still holding on to that pain? Again, it is time to forgive and release. These old pains no longer have a place in your energetic signature. They do not. So for many of you, you are going to, as you go through this change, you are going to see that um, maybe some addictions or coping mechanisms that you have are no longer needed because you feel whole on the inside. You're reinventing your identity. You're forgiving. You're letting go. Your environment and the people around you will absolutely look and feel different. So say for perhaps someone around you was manipulating, coercing, or trying to get into your good graces in a way that caused collateral damage. You may be in a situation, maybe you go to the grocery store, maybe you go to the department store, maybe you go to a restaurant or a bar, whatever, and they are there. And before you guys were like, right as rain, you were like, oh yeah, this person really understands me and I really understand them. When you start to ascend, when you realize the error of your ways, when you see your own dark side, you will be in their presence and you will feel absolute repulsion. Repulsion. You will be repulsed by them. You will go into a situation, especially if you bonded over pain or hurt or a past wound. You may walk in, there's a group of people there, and that person is there, and you're like, I got to get out of here. I feel like I can't even talk to this person. I feel like I can't even associate with this person. I feel like being in this environment is bringing my energy down and is making me physically ill. This may be some of the energies that you will be feeling with this new moon. Total solar eclipse. So what I have to say for all of you is, is there a timeline shift? Yes, for some there will be. Some will stay stuck in the timeline they are in and others will ascend. They will be raptured out into their new timeline based on the type of energy they're putting out there. Be careful with what you are putting out there. No more hate. No more division. No more judging other people. You're busy enough taking care of your own self. You're busy enough taking care of your own shortcomings. Your own pains that you've been holding on to. The work that needs to be done right now is with yourself. To reinvent yourself. As abundant, loving, kind, appropriate boundaries, trustworthy, full of integrity, committed and loyal. This is the energy of that total solar eclipse in Aries. And for those of you, um, I am thinking about maybe possibly doing a meditation for this uh, 
total solar eclipse. You let me know what you think um, because this is not easy to do. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of repetition. Um, it's difficult. The people who are going to do really, really well uh, with this uh, change and this ascension into their new self, those are the people that had to face their own dark side. And it hit them right across the face. They're like, wow, I have a problem. And I, I got to get clear on this. So the minute people recognize their own internal machinations and what types of pain they're holding on to or wounds they're holding on to, once they recognize that, forgive it, let it go and forgive everything around it, they will ascend. And they will absolutely see a different timeline in their eyes, in their experience. But for those of you interested in the uh, new moon solar eclipse in Aries, total solar eclipse in Aries for each of the signs, I will be posting that here in a couple days. I wish all of you the best. Much light, much love, many blessings, and catch you on the flip side.